we shall reign in life by one Jesus. You know, as the writer of God, as our high priest, and if he is our high priest forever, it tells us one thing, we are blessed forever. Don't you know that? You are blessed forever. You have to know that. You are blessed forever. Okay, turn your Bible with me if you have your Bible with you. Again, in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. Let's begin reading on verse 1. For this cause, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Sabihin po natin the mystery. As I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Sabihin natin, mystery of Christ. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. Now, tinatalakay po natin po the past several Sundays, may kinalaman po sa tinatawag na mystery of Christ as revealed to the Apostle Paul. Now again, there's nothing mysterious with the word mystery. The word mystery was a transliteration, almost a transliteration from the original Greek word mysterion, M U S. T-E-R-I-O-N Mysterion simply means hidden thing or secret Yung po ibig sabihin Hidden thing or secret Okay Now dahil ito yung may kinalaman mo po kay Kristo uh, Because this has something to do with, with Jesus Christ So we can say that uh, This mystery is a truth that was hidden Truth that was hidden from the foundation of the world Truth that has, re- he- that has been hidden from generation Truth about the Lord Jesus Christ. Pwede natin tawag itong hidden truth. Okay? Truth about Jesus Christ and truth about the finished work of the cross. This, has something to, this truth has something to do with Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary. Now, ang tanong natin ay bakit kinakailang itago ng Panginoon? Hindi po ito itinago ng tang- Panginoon mula po sa atin. God did not hide this truth from us. Amen? So, hindi po itinago ng Panginoon itong katotohanan ito mula po sa atin. Kung ito man po ay itinago ng Panginoon, ito itinago niya mula sa kanyang kaaway ang jablon si Satanas. Because the Bible said, if only the devil knew, then he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Kung nalaman po ng jablo, ito pong plano ng Diyos. Kung nalaman po ng, pla- ng jablo ang katotohanan patungkol kay Kristo, patung- patungkol sa krus ng Kalbaryo, He should not have crucified the Lord of glory. But of course, after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, this truth about Jesus Christ, this truth about the cross, this truth about God's plan of redemption is now being revealed by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Okay, so ito po ay pinapayag na sa atin ng banal na Espiritu. At, uh, at nalaman po natin na simple lamang po. Kung tayo po ay uh, babasahin lamang natin yung po mga naunang uh, uh, sinurot po ni Pablo dito po sa Book of Ephesians, then uh, we can at least understand, uh, we can at least uh, understand uh, the knowledge of uh, the Apostle Paul as far as this mystery is concerned. In fact, yun po sinasabi ng verse 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote a four in few words. Okay? Next person, please. As I wrote a four in few words, whereby when you read, sabi natin, when I read, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ or in the truth of Christ. So all we need to do is to read. To read what? They read the first two chapters of this book. Chapter one and chapter two. And ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ. So, yun po ating ginagawa for the past several Sundays, okay? So, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 1 and let's pick up where we left up last time. 
Now, in verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We found out that in Christ, uh, everything that we have, uh, we have according to the riches of his grace. In Christ, we have salvation according to the riches of his grace. In Christ, we have wisdom according to the riches of his grace. In Christ, we have forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In Christ, we have the gift of righteousness according to the riches of his grace. If you need healing in Christ, we can have healing according to the riches of his grace. In Christ, we have prosperity according to the riches of his grace. Everything that we have in Christ, we have according to the riches of his grace. Amen? Now, kung kayo pamipiliin, okay, pipiliin po ninyo. You can have things according to the riches of his grace or you can have things according to the poverty of your human effort. Ano pipiliin po ninyo? Okay, of course, we will choose, you know, uh, everything that we can have according to the riches of His grace. Okay, now let's go on. In the next verse, He said, in verse 8, wherein He has abounded to us in all wisdom and prudence in Christ, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to the good pleasure, to His good pleasure, which, which He has purpose in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in, all, in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Now notice the praise in Him, in whom, in Christ. Kay paulit-ulit po, na ito po'y binabanggit dito. You know, at in fact, ito'y binabanggit po ni Apostol Pablo sa kanya po mga letters, napakalaga po niyan. As I said, the praise in Him, the praise in whom, the praise in Christ Jesus, the praise in in Christ, you know, lahat ng mga verses po na meron pong praise in Him, in whom, in Christ, in the Beloved, and so on and so forth, ay uh, ito po ay mga verses sa Biblia na nagpapaliwanag kung sino tayo at ano tayo ngayong tayo ay na kay Kristo Jesus. Amen? So early in my Christian life, this was a great blessing to me. You know, I read a book by Brother Hagen, the late Kenneth E. Hagen Sr. You know, sa kanyang libro, sabi po niya, I, uh, I, I look up all those verses in the New Testament, particularly in the Epistle of the Apostle Paul, where you can find or where you can read the praise in Him, in Christ, in whom, in the Beloved, you know, in Christ Jesus, and so on and so forth, then uh, meditate on those verses because those verses speak about you. It speaks about who you are. It speaks about your new identity in Him. It speaks about who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ. And the moment you find out who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ, later on you will find out what you can do in Him. That's why Paul later on was able to say, you know, I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me. Or who is strengthening me? Okay, let's go on. So, in, in, in verse 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. In whom also we have obtained. So in other words, in Christ, we already have obtained. Past tense. Nangyari na. Amen? We already have obtained an inheritance. Now, as far as inheritance are concerned, do you need to work for an inheritance? Do you need to, do you, need to uh, you know, to, to uh, uh, earn your inheritance? Now, all you need to do is to receive. Amen? Praise God. Now, na, na listen to me. Christianity is not, a, is not about achieving. Christianity is all about receiving. You, you want to be successful as a Christian? Do you want to be a, 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 a success as a believer? You need to be a good receiver. To become successful as a believer... You need to be a good receiver. Amen? Well, pastor, I thought we need to be givers. Now listen to me. You cannot give something that you don't have. You have to receive first from God before you can give to somebody else. And you cannot be a good giver unless you are a good receiver from God. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, pastor, hindi ba matagal na panahon? Eh, eh, yun ang pinag-uusapan natin, you know. Giving it shall be given unto you. That's true. Okay? Kaya lang... You know, at the time, hindi natin nakita na yung po ay nasa ilalim po ng lumang tipan. Under the old covenant of the law, you have to give first before you can receive. Under the new covenant of grace, you have received everything from God by His grace. Now, you can be a giver. Amen? So, Christianity is all about receiving. It is all about obtaining and receiving those things that God 
has already provided for us. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Are you still here with me? Kaya wag na po tayo maghanap ng 10 steps to financial freedom. No, there's no 10 steps. There's only one step. Receive. Amen? And, and, and the easiest thing to do, you know, even in the natural life, in our natural life, the easiest, one of the easiest things to do is to receive. Okay? Yung po ang sapsapi na kamadali na gawin. Yung tumanggap. So, in Christ, we have obtained our inheritance. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go on. Being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Now, notice you cannot trust you cannot believe until after you hear the word of truth. And what is the word of truth? The gospel of your salvation. Amen? Yung lamang mo paraan para ang isang tao po ay magkaroon ng pananampalataya at magtiwala sa Diyos. Kinakalam marinig niya ang salita ng katotohanan. The word of truth. And what is the word of truth? The gospel of your salvation. Which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which is the gospel of grace. Which is the good news about the new covenant that we have in Christ. That's the word of truth. Truth is always on the side of grace. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen? So, yun lamang po paraan. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Hindi darating po para napatasin ng tao kung napapangingan po ng tao ay may kinalaman po sa uh, parating may kinalaman po sa, sa mga bagay-bagay na dapat niyang gawin. May kinalaman po sa batas na dapat niyo sundin. Hindi po sa ganong paraan darating po ang pananampalataya ng isang tao. Okay? You know what? You can even go to the Bible. Pwede tayo pumunta sa Biblia at kunin po natin lahat ng magagandang prinsipyo sa buhay na matatagpuan po natin sa Biblia at pwede natin i-apply yan sa ating buhay at pwede tayo maging successful. Okay? Don't you know that, that even unbelievers... Maging yung mga unbelievers, these people are without God. And yet, kapag ka sila po ay natutuhan po ang prinsipyo sa Biblia at in po nila, sila po ay pwedeng maging successful. So by just applying the principles that can be found in the Bible, with or without God, you can be successful. Amen? That's why the Bible is not about principles per se. Marami po magandang principles po dyan na kung, ta- kung iti susundin lamang po ng, ng tao, you know, whether you are a believer or unbeliever, you can become a success. Now, if you are a believer, you have God with you. But if you, you are an unbeliever, you don't have God. So even without God, by just following principles, you can be a success. So if the Bible is all about principle, it means saying we don't need God. We just need the principles in the Bible. Are you saying with me? Yes, thank God for the principles that we can derive from the Bible. Amen. But the Bible is not about principles. Amen? The Bible is not about 10 steps to become successful. The Bible is about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has already done. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? Now some people say, well, pastor, you know what? Okay? Isang bagay ayaw namin siya, pastor. Minsan hindi ka nagtuturo ng mga how-tos. Hindi ka nagtuturo ng mga dapat namin gawin. Hindi ka nagtuturo ng mga principles. You know? Puro ka Jesus, puro ka finish work, puro ka grito, redemption, puro ka grace. Now, isang oras lang tayo makikita-kita sa isang linggo. Okay? Yun lang ang panahon ko para ma-exalt si Jesus Christ sa buhay niyo. Yun lang ang panahon ko para, para you know, pag-usapan natin ang kapayagan ni Kristo. And then, magtuturo pa ako ng iba. Okay? No, I don't need to do that. Are you still with me? Now, sabi na iba, siguro, pastor, hindi mo alam yung mga yun. Oh, come on. Okay? I'm a bookworm. Karamihan po sa mga libro, binabasa ko rin. Pero wala akong leading ng Holy Spirit na i-share sa inyo. Why, would, why should I share something that, that the Spirit of God is not leading me to do so? Amen? Ano po tayo? So, go ahead. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with reading uh, John Maxwell's book. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. And all those, uh, you know, uh, good books, okay? But 
I'm talking about the Bible. The Bible is all about Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Now let's go on. So, in verse, uh, where are we now? Verse 13. Again, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you have to believe. So faith, we, we cannot remove the element of faith. Amen? Yes, everything is by grace, but everything is by grace through faith. Everything is by grace, but everything is by grace through faith. Salvation is by grace through faith. The gift of righteousness is by grace through faith. Everything that we receive from God, we receive by His grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, hindi natin pwedeng ihiwalay po yung pananampalataya na katulad po na gustong mangyari ng iba. Okay? And mamaya po, papaliwanag ko po yan. So, again, in verse, uh, <clears throat> verse uh, 13, in whom you also trusted, you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. What does it mean to be sealed with the Holy Spirit? Okay? First of all, not only we are born of the Spirit, okay? Through the new birth, the Holy Spirit came to dwell in us. Hindi lamang po tayo pinanak mula sa banal Espiritu. Nung tayo pinanganak, hindi lang tayo pinanganak mula sa Espiritu, ang Espiritu ay pumasok sa atin upang manirahan sa atin. You are being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So this was the truth that was hidden from, from, from the foundation of the world. Okay? God, originally, His desire was not only to impart His light to us. His desire is not only to give us His eternal light. His original design and His original desire was for Him to live His light in us and through us. Amen? So, dapat maunawaan po natin. Okay? So, God's plan was not only to give us His light. It is one thing for God to give us His light. But it is another thing for God to live in us and through us. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Whether we understand this or not, this is the truth. Amen? Praise God. So, Paul said, it is no longer I who live. It is no longer we who live. It is now Christ who lives in us. Your life is now hidden with Christ in that. Christ is our life. We are being indwelt by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is God Himself. Amen? Purihin ang Panginoon. Okay? Now let's, let's go on. Praise God. Now verse 14. Uh, uh, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now, what does it mean to be sealed with the Holy Spirit? Aside from what I have already mentioned to you. Now, first of all, being sealed with the Holy Spirit simply means you are sealed with God's approval. It is a seal of approval or acceptance. Earlier in verse 6, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, to the praise of the glory of His grace wherein He has made us accepted in the beloved. The day you got born again, that was the day that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. The seal of the Holy Spirit is a seal of God's approval. It is a seal of God's acceptance. Okay? Now, this seal is, can be a legal term also. You said that seal, S-E-A-L, can be a legal term also. Seal of approval or seal of acceptance. So, yung po maral Espiritu, yung po pinakaselyo, sinelyo ang tanang Holy Spirit para ipadama sa atin, ipakita sa atin that we are already accepted by God. Amen? Okay. Number two, it can also mean a seal of completion. A seal of completion. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Colossians 2, 10. <clears throat> it says here, and you are complete in Him. Again, praise, the praise in Him. Notice that. In Christ, you are complete. Sabi po natin, in Him, I am complete. Now, by the way, now, 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 yung po mga praise na in Him that I, I told you, 
describe who we are in Christ, everything that we are in Christ, everything that we are in Christ, we have and we are in the spirit man. So, kinal maunuan po natin yan. That's why it is very important. It is very important for us to rightly divide uh, the spirit from the soul. Not only it is important for us to rightly divide the old covenant from the new covenant. Not only it is important for us to rightly divide the, the old covenant of law from the new covenant of grace. It is equally important for us to rightly divide the spirit from the soul. Marami po na ho confused sa kadailanan po na ang alam po nila ang espirito tsaka yung soul o yung kaluluwa iisa lang. But the Bible is very clear na ito po ay magkahiwalay. Amen? The truth is you are a spirit being. You possess a soul and you live in a physical body. Sabihin po natin, I am a spirit being. I possess a soul. I live in a physical body. The soul comprises of the mind, the will, and the emotion. Nung tayo na born again, it was the spirit man that got born again, that become a new creation. We still have the same soul. We still have the same mind. We still have the same emotion. We still have the, the same uh, 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 will. Ito po ang uh, ating personality. Okay? And of course, uh, we still have the same physical body governed by the five physical senses. Okay? But the real you is the spirit man. Amen? The one that got born again. The one that, got, that became a new creation. The spirit man. You are a spirit man. You are not a soul having a spirit. You are a spirit having a soul. Amen? So, so we, 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 we need to rightly divide that. If not, we will be confused. We will not fully understand the, 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 the new covenant truth. Now, I, I was blessed early in my Christian life. You know, two, two, two persons, I've heard the same... Uh, uh, the same statements. Una po si, si uh, E.W. Kenyon. Sabi niya, you know, uh, the key to understanding the new covenant, the key to understanding the Bible is by understanding the difference between uh, the spirit and soul. By rightly dividing spirit and soul. And the second uh, uh, person na naringan ko niyan was the late Lester Samron. Okay, yung founder po ng uh, Manila Battle Temple na ngayon po ay uh, 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 Cathedral of Praise. Okay? Sabi niya, ganun din. If you want to understand the new covenant, you want to understand the Bible, you need to differentiate between spirit and soul. Amen? So you are a spirit being, you have a soul, and you live in a physical body. Okay, now let's go on. So in Christ, in our spirit man, we are complete. Amen? So, that's why we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So the seal, you know, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, denotes that we are complete in Him. Now, even in the natural, okay, sino sa inyo dito ang nakapag, na, na, naranasan po niyo magpadala po ng, ng, ng uh, mga balikbayan box, okay, either from the stage uh, to the Philippines or vice versa. So, hindi ba? Kapag ka meron ka ilalagay doon, hindi ba po, magpapadala po ng, ng mga balikbayan box. Usually, mga Pilipino po sa Amerika, gano'n, kapag ka meron mga sales, pamimili na po yan, iipunin lang po yan, nalagay sa mga balikbayan box, Kapuno na, papadala sa mga kamag-anak dito. Something like that. So, ganun po. Of course, kapag kayo dinala po yan sa LBC o kaya sa Federal Express, ay uh, iisa-isahin po yan. Merong packing list. Gagawa ng packing list, you know, at, at, at ililista po lahat ng mga uh, dapat maging laman nung pong palikbayan box. At idodobol check po yan. Okay, check, 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 check. Pag nakita po nilang kumpleto na, walang kulang. Kung ano po yung nakalagay sa packing list, yari nakalagay doon sa loob ng box, complete na, saka lang ito seselyohan. Seselyohan na po yan. Amen? So, ganun din po tayo. The fact that we were sealed with the Holy Spirit tells us we are already complete in Christ. God will never seal you with the Holy Spirit until you are complete. Amen? We are complete in Him because we are the finished work of the cross. The new creation is the finished work of the cross. Amen? Okay, now let's go on. Okay, what else? Now, it can also mean a seal of ownership. A seal of ownership. Now, at that time, even today, ay yung mga malalaking hacienda, okay, may mga katabi rin yung malalaking hacienda, paano malalaman po ng hacienda ito na ito yung mga baka na kanyang pag-aari? Okay, paano malalaman ng kabiling hacienda na ito ang pag-aari niya mga baka? Meron silang seal na ginagawa. Okay, at uh, meron po silang parang seal na ito po ay kanila pong uh, idadarang sa apoy. Pagkatapos, eh, 
ilalagay po doon sa may pigi ng baka. Wala na, magmamarka na po yan. Hindi na pwedeng angkinin nung kabila. Dahil silyado na. Pag-aari na ito nito. Hasyendero, so and so. Okay? Ganun din po tayo. Okay? Maliwanag po in the spirit world that God owns you. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. The devil. Uh, malayo pa lamang nakikita ng Diablo ang selyo ng Banal Spirit sa buhay mo. Ah, hindi ko pag-aari ito. Pag-aari ito ng kabila. Okay? Hallelujah. Hindi ko pag-aari ito. Anak ito ng Diyos. Pag-aari ito ng Diyos. Okay? Well, one thing more. Now, now the go with me to the book of... Uh, 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 let me see. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Are you learning something? Now, in verse uh, 19, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, the Holy Spirit, which is in you, in your spirit, man, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So in other words, brothers and sisters, we belong to God. We have been purchased. We have been bought with a price. Amen? That's the first uh, uh, reason why we belong to God. We have been purchased. We have been bought with a price. The blood of Jesus Christ. So we belong to God. So in Latin, I belong to God. Not only, you know, we become valuable because of the price that was paid. Now, tayo po'y nagkaroon po na malaking value, hindi po dahil lamang doon sa pinambayad sa atin, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, another... Another thing that makes us valuable was the one because, because of the one who owns you. Because God, the God of the universe, is the one who owns us that makes us very, very valuable. You agree with me? Now, no, hindi pa kasi katampo ng Beatles, si John Lennon ay bumili po ng ashtray na halagang wala pang $10. Okay? Hindi pa sila sikat. Bumili siya ng ashtray na walang, wala pang halagang $10. Tapos bigla silang sumikat at namatay si John Lennon. At meron po nakakita na kanyang astray. Okay? At isinubasta po doon sa uh, Christie's uh, 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 whatever. Okay? At uh, you know, meron pong bumili. No malaman po nitong mayamang taong ito na itong astray na ito ay pag-aari ni John Lennon, binili ng 50,000 US dollars. Imagine, wala pang $10? Bakit nag- Ba't bigla lumaki? Di hamak yung value dahil doon sa nagmamayari. Amen? Sino ang nagmamayari sa'yo? Diyos ang nagmamayari sa atin. Mataas ang value mo, kapatid. Did you hear me? Kaya sabi ko, kung makakausap ko na si Manny Pacquiao, may ipapapaayaw ako sa kanya. Kasi si kar- kad- kadalasa po, karamihan sa kanyang mga laban, Pagka nanalo nung araw, yung kanyang ginamit na gloves doon sa kanyang panalo, pipirmahan niya, tapos pamimigay na lang ng ganun. Dapat itinatago niya. 50 years from now, 100 years from now, yung kanyang apo, pwedeng ibenta yun. Imagine, winning gloves ni Manny Pacquiao. Okay? Palagay niyo, magkano halaga niyan? 100 years or 50 years from now. Okay? Something like that. Are you still here with me? Kaya yung ibang mga sikat na artista, namimili po yan ng mga bags. Nag-iipon po yan. Future na tinitingnan nila. Imagine, isang handbag na pag-aari ni Sharon Coneta. Magkano? Yan, 50 years from now. Something like that. So in other words, nagkakaroon ng value ang isang tao dahil doon sa nagmamayari sa kanya. And I, I have a good news for you. Hallelujah. God who owns you is much, much greater than John Lennon. God who owns you is much, much greater than, you know, Sharon. Amen? Okay? God who owns you is much, 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 much greater. <laughs> much, much, much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, let's go on. Hallelujah. So, what else? Seal of assurance and seal of God's protection and assurance. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. 
Now, in fact, let, let's, let's read <clears throat> verse 13. Hold fast to the forms of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. The good thing which was committed unto you kept keep by the Holy Ghost which dwell in us. The good thing which is committed, the word committed can also be translated as deposited. That good thing which was deposited unto you is being kept by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Amen? And of course, if titinan po natin po yung context, you know, this is something with salvation. The salvation that God has committed in you is being kept by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Everything that God has deposited in you, including salvation, gift of righteousness, you know, blessing, anointing, everything that God has deposited in you is being kept by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Okay? Including salvation. So we have this idea in the past na, you know, yes, it is true, we were saved by grace. Okay, pero dapat para manatili tayong ligtas, we need to hold on. You know, we need to hold on to God. You know, para baga yung ating effort, yung ating performance, yun ang, uh, yun po ang, uh, yung, yung po ang magpapanatili ng ating kaligtasan. Yung kaligtasan na tanggap natin by grace, pero para manatili ligtas, we have to do this. Okay? So many times we say, we have to hold on to God. You know what? Because uh, 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 yun lamang mga mananatili, Hanggang wakas ang maliligtas. Have you heard that, that phrase? Yun lamang mananatili hanggang wakas ang siyang maliligtas. No? Okay? Hindi po tayo ang nagpapanatili ng ating kaligtasan. Ang barala espirito na nasa atin ang siyang nagpapanatili ng ating kaligtasan. Okay? Instead of saying, hold on to God, why not let the Holy Spirit hold on to you? Amen? It is not us holding on to God. It is God holding us. I remember this story from Brother Hagen again in one of his books. Now at that time, they were doing some kind of experiment on the dirigibles. Now dirigibles is a term na uh, ito po yung is simply is an air balloon. Okay, naginawa nilang airship na pwede pong maging mode of transportation instead of airplane. Of course, ito yung mga short distance lamang. Ang technology po ay parang hot air balloon. Na pamagitan po ng hot air or whatever, helium, whatever, ay pwede po ito uh, umangat sa ere at pwede po ito mag-transport, you know, using uh, some kind of uh, 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 yung mga LEC, something like that, pwede siyang mag-transport from people from one place to another. So they were on the experimental stage. So meron po ilang mga trabahador na kung saan ay magpapakaula po sila ng airship. So, of course, meron itong mga lubid. Okay? At nakatali po ito sa stakes. At, at nung, nung, nung uh, medyo umaangat na at medyo papaangat na, alis sila sa tali. So, pero hawak pa rin nila lubid. Pero mukhang napasobra yata yung helium o napasobra yata yung hot air. Ang bilis ng uh, pagangat po ng, ng, ng air balloon. Okay? Akala po nila, kaya po nilang pigilin. Kaya pilit nilang pinipigil. Okay, huli lang lahat nung mala- ma-realize po nila na nasa area na silang lahat. Okay, yung po mga trabahador na may hawak na lubid, sila po ay nasa area na. 50 feet, you know, 100 feet, you know, huli na para tumalon. Okay? So, uh, alam nila, well, anyway, you know, uh, hindi naman ito magtatagal. Hindi naman ito manatili sa ere. Pag naubos na yung hot air or whatever, yung helium, eh, ito po ay, ay bababa din. So, hihintay lang nila. So, hawak nila. Kaya lang medyo natagalan. Kaya yung iba po napagod na. Nagdurugo na yung kalama kamay. Kaya isa-isa po sila na nakakabitaw at sila po ay nalalaglag. Okay? So merong isa po dito na trabahador na napas niya, wait a minute, ano bang ginagawa ko? Pinit ang hawak siya ganun. Ang ginawa po niya, eh, simple lang pala ito. Ginawa po niya yung tali, yung sobrang tali, itinali po niya ang kanyang sarili. Amen? So, pagkatapos bigla siyang bumitaw, pak, pagbitaw niya, you know, yung tali na ang humahawak sa kanya. Tapos nakita niya, ang ganda pala di sa taas. Okay? Yung mga kasama niya, isa-isa nagbaksakan patay. Siya po, hanggang bulumapag po yung, yung air balloon, siya po'y buhay. Siya po nakaligtas. Bakit? 
Pagkat sa na siya po ang humahawak, hinayaan po niya ilumid ang humawak sa kanya. Amen? Okay? So, ganun po. Sa na tayo po ang pilit na humahawak sa Diyos, hayaan niyo po ang Diyos ang humawak sa inyo. As simple as that. Amen? Praise God. So, ganun po. Ang Diyos talaga ang humahawak po sa atin. It is God who is keeping us. Glory to God. It is the Holy Spirit in us keeping us. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay? Now, going back to Ephesians chapter 1. Are you learning something? Wow. Also, after that, you believe you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you have to believe. So believing is a necessary element by grace through faith. Wherefore I also, verse, uh, verse 14, where, which, which is the earnest or the deposit of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase possession. Now underline the word purchase, it's past tense. Purchase possession. In other words, the payment has already been made. Bayad na. Amen? Bayad na po. Lahat ay bayad na. Okay? At ang katunayan po, ang guarantee na lahat ay bayad na, ang Baranay Espiritu. The Holy Spirit is the earnest. The Holy Spirit is a guarantee. Now, kung kayo po yung familiar sa real estate, di ba? Kapag ka nagbigay na po ng down payment sa tao, ng earnest money, ibig sabihin po, hindi mo na pwedeng ibenta yan sa ibang tao. Pagkat kung sino man po nagdeposito, kung sino po nagbigay ng earnest money, ibig sabihin sa kanya na yan, walang pwedeng umangkin yan. Amen? Praise God. Ganoon din po sa iyong buhay. Nagbigay na po ng earnest money ang Panginoon. Para sa'yo, ang Baranda Espiritu, wala nang pwedeng umangkin sa'yo. Tell the neighbor and say, wala nang pwedeng umangkin sa'yo. As simple as that. Amen? Now, now, now ang pagkakaiba lamang po, you know, sa real estate, pag nabigay ng earnest money, ibig sabihin, hindi pa talaga fully paid. Pabalik siya para uh, uh, ibigay yung kapunuan. Dito po, hindi po, da, hindi po porke ang Holy Spirit tinawag na earnest or deposit, it doesn't mean that hindi pa bayad. Look at that. Purchase possession. Amen? Purchase possession. In other words, everything has already been paid for. Ang, ang, ang ibig lamang sabihin po dito, some of those purchase possession are still to be redeemed in the future. Like your glorified body. Don't you know that even your future glorified body is already paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ? Kasama po yan sa binaya ni Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Magi yung ating pong future glorified body. Yan po ay kasama na. Bayad na po yan. Amen? Praise God. So, the Holy Spirit is the deposit. The Holy Spirit is the earnest. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Praise God. Wow. Now, let's go on. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints. So, maliwanag. Na ang concept niya dito yung mga mananapalataya. Now notice, the, the Apostle Paul didn't say, Wherefore I also after I heard your awakening, no, he said after I heard your faith, not awakening. Amen? Now, now, now ito po yung binibigyan ko ng DN sapagkat meron pong ilan na Pilit na po ang paso po sa grace community. Ito po yung mga nabanggit ko nakaraan, mga universalists. Na ang paniniwala po nila, lahat ng tao yung ligtas na. Dahil sa ginawa ni Cristo Cruz ng Calvario, whether that person know it or not, he's already saved. Whether that person believe or not, he's already saved. No? Okay? Hindi po totoo yun. Are you still here with me? A person has to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Person, Yes, salvation is for everybody. But a person has to believe to receive the grace of salvation. Are you still here with me? Okay, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all saints. Now, faith and love. Now, no, no, notice those two elements, faith and love. Now, tina po natin si Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Galatians 5, 6. Look at this. Galatians 5, 6. For in, again, that praise, for in Jesus Christ. Are you in Jesus Christ? For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. In other words, in Jesus Christ, this is the new covenant. 
So ano man po ang paniniwala sa New Co- sa Old Covenant, hindi na po ito applicable sa New Covenant. Sa Old Covenant, mahalaga po yung circumcision, mahalaga po yung uncircumcision under the Old Covenant law. But under the New Covenant of Grace in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything. But faith which worketh by love. Sabi natin, faith which worketh by love. Say it again, faith which worketh by love. Hallelujah. Now, now uh, uh, remember, uh, tandaan po natin yung, 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 yung uh, uh, mga sinabi po dito. With that, go to Galatians chapter 6, the next chapter, verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision. Parehas ba doon sa unang binasa natin? Magkaparehas po. Amen? Isa lamang po ang sinasabi dito. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Okay? So in other words, kung ati pong uh, igukumpara po yung dalawang verses, you know, and then gagamitan natin ng kaunting spiritual syllogism, okay, kaunting spiritual logic, so to speak, so pwede natin sabihin, you know, if Galatians 5, 6 tells us, for in Jesus Christ, no, 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 for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision ability, anything, no, but faith is working by love, and then, in Galatians chapter 6, it tells us, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Therefore, okay, the new creation is equivalent to faith which worketh by love. Are you a new creation in Christ Jesus? I said, are you, are you a new creation in Christ Jesus? Now, you cannot be a new creation in Christ Jesus without faith which works by knowing how God loves you. That's how faith works. Faith works. The mo- uh, the faith works the moment you know God loves you. Amen. Now this is the reason why you know a lot of believers maybe. Now why is it? Parang bagamat alam ko may pananapalataya ako eh, pero pero bakit parang hindi na work? Hindi gumaga ng aking pananapalataya. Okay. Dahil po sa kakulangan ng kapayagan patungkol sa pag-ibig ng Dios. Kaya hindi po nag-work ang pananampalataya. If until now, you still think that every time na ikaw ay nagkakaroon ng sakit o karamdaman o anumang uh, trahedya sa buhay mo, ito ay gawa ni Lord na, you know, may purpose si Lord, kaya ka nagkaroon ng sakit, you know, at tinuturo ang kalaman ng Panginoon, you know, binigyan ka ng sakit, you know, to teach you something, you, you don't have the revelation of the love of God. Amen? Hindi mo kilala ang Diyos bilang Diyos na nagmamahal sa iyo. Now, sino sa inyong mga magulang dito? Gusto ba ninyo matuto at maging maayos ang buhay ng inyong mga anak? Okay? Now, sino sa inyong mga magulang dito? Sa kagustuhan po ninyong matuto ang inyong mga anak, kukuha kayo ng hiringgilya? Okay? At lalagyan po ninyo yung hiringgilya ng virus? Isasaksak ninyo doon sa anak ninyo? Yung, yung sakit? para sa pamagitan ng sakit na isinaksak niyo sa anak ninyo, matututo siya. Meron bang pipwedeng gumawa sa inyo? Pag ginawa po ninyo yun, yun ang baksak ninyo sa bilang guwang. That's child abuse. Pero marami po mga kristyano, pinagbibinta kanila ang Diyos ng child abuse. God is not a child abuser. He's a good father. Are you still here with me? Na pagka may sakit, oh, galing kay Lord dyan. You know, pinapalo ka lang ni Lord. <laughs> Listen to me. Kung talagang papaloyin ka ni Lord, okay, sa ibang planeta ka, pupulutin. Hello? So, marami mga tao po, mali ang pagkakilala sa ating Diyos. That's why, that's the reason why, even a lot of believers, yung kanilang panampalatay, hindi po nag-work. Because they don't have the revelation of the love of God. Sabi nga ni Crep Low Dollar, now, for many years, itinuro po niya, you know, faith works when you walk in love. Nakafocus na naman sa atin. Okay? Lately, na-discover niya, faith works when you know that God loves you. The more you know God loves you, the more your faith will work. Yeah? Hindi ba even in the natural, mahirap bang pagkatiwalaan isang taong alam mo, mahal na mahal ka? mag tao. Kapag ka meron isang taong, alam mo, mahal na mahal ka ng taong yan, 
Ang daling magtiwala sa taong yun. Did you hear me? Ganun din po. Pagkaalam po natin na ang ating ama sa langit, mahal na mahal tayo ng ating Diyos. At hindi magbabago ang kanyang pag sa atin, ang daling magtiwala sa Diyos. As simple as that. Amen? God loves you. And that will never change. Okay? Glory to God. So, his prayer was, After I heard of your faith and of your love, where are we now? I cease not to give thanks for you and making mention of you in my prayers. So as I said a while ago, napakalaga po nito. Now some people are trying to remove the element of faith. Now whether you believe it or not, you know, you are already saved. You know, all people are already saved. They have just to awaken. Kinakalang magising lang sila. No, no, no. no. It is not true. Now some people are dead spiritually. Some people are alive spiritually. Either you are dead or alive. Sabi natin, dead or alive. Either a person is dead or alive spiritually. Now when it comes to those dead person, you cannot awaken a dead person. Hindi pa pwedeng gisingin ang patay. Amen? Ang patay, kinakailang buhayin muli. Are you still here with me? So napakaliwanag po ng Biblia. You know, some people believe that because of the cross, you know, everybody's already saved. Meaning to say, everybody's already made alive, everybody already has the Holy Spirit in them. That is not true. Natinan po natin doon sa... sa <clears throat> now, if it is true, then thank God for that. Kung, kung, kung yan po ay magkakatotoo. You know, na lahat po ay maliligtas, lahat isa sa palataya. Well, yan din po ang desire ng Panginoon. But the truth is, hindi lahat po ay gustong manampalataya kay Yeso Kristo. Hindi lahat ay tumatanggap. Are you still here with me? Okay now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And I will end with this. So notice, sino pong kausap dito ni Pablo? Of course, ang kausap dito ni Pablo ay mga mananampalataya. He was writing to the church in Corinth with all the saints. Yung po makikita po natin 2 Corinthians chapter 1. So he was writing to the church in Corinth with all the saints. Now, kausip niya natin manan ng palataya, verse 14, he said, But you, believers, ye believers, na be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So merong believers, yung kanyang kausap, at merong po mga unbelievers, maliwanag po. So merong believers, merong unbelievers. Paano po niya describe yung mga believers at paano po niya describe yung mga unbelievers? For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Now, sino po yung righteousness? Believers. Sino po yung unrighteousness? Unbelievers. So, maliwanag po. May pagkakaiba ba yung righteousness saka unrighteousness? Meron. Okay? And then, ano pa? And what communion has light with darkness? Ano pong description sa mga believers? Light. Anong description sa mga unbelievers? Darkness. Meron ba pagkakaiba sa light at darkness? Of course. Amen? Not only that, and what concord has Christ with Belial? Na paano describe yung mga believers? Christ. Na paano describe yung mga unbelievers? Belial. Belial is one of the uh, uh, names attributed to the devil. Or what part has he has that believe with an infidel? Paano tinawag? Believer? Believers? Believe? He that believe? And the unbeliever, infidel. Okay? Now, uh, what else? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Anong tawag sa mga believers? Temple of God. Anong tawag po sa mga unbelievers? Temple of idols. For you, believers, are the temple of God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. So maliwanag po. Now, kailan po ito sinulat ni Pablo? Before, or after, uh, before the cross or after the cross? After the cross. Amen? So, this is the truth. Okay, yung sinasabi nila na, you know, whether you preach the gospel, whether a person believe or not, whether a person is aware or not, the truth is everybody is already saved. That's a lie from the pit of hell. At kinakalang address po natin because uh, the, yung, pong, yung pong error na yan, Yung uh, error about universal salvation, okay? And, at meron pang uh, iba na ultimate sal- reconciliation. Some people believe that even Satan will be saved. 
Are you still here with me? Okay. So that is not true. Amen. Now some people may will argue, well, you know, it is not the will of God for, 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 to, save, to, to send anybody to hell. Well, as far as God is concerned, you know, yun ang kalooban ng Diyos. Na ang tao ay hindi mapunta sa impyerno. Hindi porki yun pong kalooban ng Diyos na ang tao ay hindi mapunta sa impyerno, ibig sabihin walang impyerno. Some people will choose, you know, to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. So isang bagay po dapat nating maunawaan po when God created Adam at hindi po nawawala sa tao po yan. Freedom of choice. Okay? Whether believer or unbeliever, lahat po merong freedom of choice. Amen? Kaya po si Pino yung pa- pangulo natin dahil sa freedom of choice na meron po ang mga Pilipino. Kaya po nahalal po si Bam Aquino at si Nancy Binay because of your freedom of choice. Did you hear me? Nari pa tayo? Hindi pwedeng alisin sa atin yan. Naka, naka-enshrined yan sa ating constitution. Okay? It is one of our bill of rights, so to speak. Freedom to choose. Freedom to choose the place where you want to live your life. You know? Freedom to travel. Liberty of abode. And, and, and liberty of travel. You know? Freedom of religion. But uh, 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 sa atin po, you know, sa constitution, freedom of religion. Sa atin po, mas maganda yung freedom from religion. <laughs> Amen? So, freedom to choose your own religion. That's why I myself, I have to be very careful. I have to preach the pure gospel. Because in some churches, in some fellowship, you know, they are already worshiping their pastor. Sabi nga ni Pastor Mel, may nakasabay isang believers sa isang conference, you know, at dahil nakita po siya na, na merong ID na pastor, okay, Membro na ibang church, nakasabay niya umiihi. Nakita, pastor. Sabi niya, pastor, umiihi din pala kayo. <laughs> My goodness. Where does ordinary people like you, man? Amen? So don't worship your pastor. Okay? We only worship Jesus Christ. Did you hear me? Oh, glory to God. So, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let's just uh, uh, read the, the next verse and then we'll finish this. So, Paul said, Wherefore I also I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. I cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fire of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what is the riches of His inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of His power to us who who believe, according to the working of His mighty power. His calling, His inheritance, His power. We'll talk about that next Sunday. Amen? Praise God. Remember these words from the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 17. They which receive God's abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in to Reigning in Life. We trust that you have been blessed. For more information on the resources and how to become a partner and support this ministry, do log on to our website at jfcf.org. And for more of our teaching archives, be sure to check our YouTube account. Your donations and generous giving will help us to continue to share the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. And remember, God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things, at all times, you may abound to every good work. This ministry believes that your tithes belong to your local church and your offering will be received as a seed to help the preaching of the gospel.